We now go to 1548. A man is on his deathbed. He, in his last moments, is presented with a copy of his entire life's hard work, his groundbreaking book. Little does he know that this book will revolutionize Europe and then the world forever. The man is Copernicus, and the book is De Revolutionibus, which has his idea of the sun being at the center of the universe and the earth moving around. This opinion conflicted severely with the prevailing Christian belief, so the best thing Copernicus thought was to delay the publishing of his work till his last moments, when he could be spared from the criticism of the church. But after paying our respects to this great scientist, we want to go deeper into how he arrived at this radical conclusion. There had been people before him who had proposed a sun-centric universe, but he had provided planetary models to substantiate his views. And more importantly, his book is considered the biggest triumph of science over dogmatic religion and ushered in the scientific revolution. It was not until 1957 that Austrian mathematician and historian of science Otto Neugebauer found striking similarities between the lunar model of Copernicus and that of Muslim astronomer Ibn Shatir, written some 200 years back. Copernicus had also incorporated the geometric solutions of other Muslim astronomers like Nasir al-Din al-Tusi and al-Urdi. Add to this the discovery of German scientist and polymath Willy Hartner in 1975 that even the diagrams are same detail by detail, down to their alphabetical designation, where Tusi uses Alif, Copernicus uses A, where Tusi uses Ba, Copernicus uses B, and so on. So the question then is, did Copernicus really start the scientific revolution?